Okay, so we're back. Now, we're talking about Benghazi. The fighting at the CIA annex. There was the fighting at the consulate. They rescued those people. The CIA spokespeople are saying they didn't tell, give a stand down order when they did. And then they said, we, we got to take credit for how many people we saw saved and these selfless. It was the Navy SEALs that disobeyed the CIA orders. Okay, they saved them. Those people at the consulate would have all died if the, if the CIA had gotten their way. If Hillary Clinton had gotten her way. If President Obama had gotten his way they'd all be dead. 30 people dead. But these Navy SEALs went on and fought at the consulate. They rescued those people. They recovered the body of Sean Smith. And then the f fighting went on at the CIA annex for more than four hours. Enough time for any planes based at Sigonella Air Base just 408, 480 miles away to arrive. Fox News has learned that two separate Tier 1 Special Operations Forces were told to wait among them Delta Force operators. A Special Operations Team, or CIF, which stands for Commanders in Extremist Force, operating in Central Europe had been moved to Sigonella, Italy, but they were, told, they were never told to deploy. In fact, Pentagon officials say there were never any requests to deploy assets from outside the country. A second force that specializes in counterterrorism rescues was on hand at Sigonella according to senior military and intelligence sources. According to those sources, they could have flown to Benghazi in less than two hours. They were in the same distance to Benghazi as those that were sent from Tripoli. Spectre gunships are commonly used by the special operations community to provide close air support. According to sources on the ground during the attack, the special operator on the roof of the CIA annex had visual contact and a laser pointed at the Libyan mortar that was targeting the CIA annex. The operators were calling in coordinates of where the Libya, Libyan forces were firing from. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta told reporters at the Pentagon that there was not a, a clear enough picture of what was occurring on the ground in Benghazi to send help. This is the de Defense Secretary saying they couldn't send help. They didn't know, even though the SEALs are there on the ground, seeing the enemy, asking for help. Quote, there's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on here, Panetta said Thursday, but the basic principle here is that you don't deploy forces into harm's way without knowing what's going on. Hmm. That's interesting. He's saying they don't know what's going on. Fox News has learned that there were two military surveillance drones direct, redirected to Benghazi shortly after the attack on the consulate began. They were already in the vicinity. The second surveillance craft was sent to relieve the first drone, perhaps due to fuel issues. Both were capable of sending real-time visuals back to U.S. officials in Washington, D.C. Any U.S. official or agency with proper clearance, including the White House Situation Room, State Department, CIA, Pentagon, and others could call up that video in real time on their computers. Tyrone Woods was later joined at the scene by former Navy, fellow Navy SEAL Glenn Doherty, who was sent in from Tripoli as part of the Global Response Staff, or GRS, that provides security to CIA case officers and provides counter surveillance and surveillance protection. They were killed by a mortar shell at 4 a.m. Libyan time, nearly seven hours after the attack at the consulate began. A window that represented more than enough time for the U.S. military to send backup from nearby bases in Europe. According to sources familiar with special operations, four mortars were fired at the annex. The first one struck outside. Three more hit the annex. A mortarcade of dozens of Libyan vehicles, some mounted with 50 cal guns, belonging to the February 17th Brigades, a Libyan militia, which is, is supposed to be friendly to the U.S., finally showed up at the CIA annex approximately 3 a.m., uh, so we're talking 
uh, seven hours, six hours into the attack, these, this militia finally shows up to help. Uh, an American quick re- reaction force sent from Tripoli had arrived at 2 a.m., four hours after the initial attack, but they were delayed for 45 minutes at the airport because they couldn't get a ride. Uh, because the Libyan militias wouldn't give them the escort to the annex. The Libyan militias that were supposed to be our friends. The uh, American Special Operators Woods, Doherty, and at least two others were part of the global response staff, the CIA element based at the CIA annex. Their mission was actually a mission to track and repurchase in Benghazi arms that had proliferated in the wake of Muammar Gaddafi's fall. Part of their mission was to find more than the 20,000 missing man pads or shoulder head held missiles capable of bringing down commercial aircraft. According to a source on the ground at the time, the the team uh, inside the CIA annex had captured three Libyan attackers and were forced to hand them over to the Libyans. U.S. officials do not know what happened to these three attackers and whether they were released by the Libyan forces. Okay, so... So there, those Navy SEALs are in there to recover weapons, and that's important later because <coughs> you're gonna, we're going to talk about, in, at a future uh, time, about how our government's been arming Al-Qaeda over there. So, of course, the weapons are missing, and then these Navy SEALs are sent in there to track them down, and they can never find them. Um, again, this is uh, polymike.com. Benghazi terror attacks, CIA operatives told twice to stand down during the fight. Plot thickens. Amy Sterling Castle. Um, So they're repeatedly told, and we don't know who these U.S. defense and State Department officials are who repeatedly denied help from the Spectre gunship at Siganella, Italy, or told them to stand down at the CIA annex. And, And so we don't know, but Leon Panetta's involved. We know that. We now know about these 20,000 missing handheld missiles that uh, fell during the fall of Gaddafi. That was such a great operation that we helped carry out. Um, The parents of these Navy SEALs feel like they were lied to to their faces. The father said shaking hands with President Obama was like shaking hands with a dead fish. The mother of Sean Smith, the dead information officer, said some of the people from the government looked me right in the eye and lied to me. So, listen to this. Newsmax. Newsmax exclusive. U.S. hired Al-Qaeda-linked group to defend Benghazi mission. You know, so those people, it's called the, uh, the February 17th Martyrs Brigade. They were paid by the U.S. government to provide security to the U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi. Those are the guys that showed up six hours late. Those are the guys who couldn't give our special forces a ride from the airport to come help at the annex. Those guys were hired by our government, by our State Department, over which Hillary Clinton was the boss, and their Facebook page has several uh, entries openly professing sympathy for Ansar al-Sharia, who is to blame for the attacks on the consulate. Yeah, that's right. So the people we hired to protect the ambassador were friends with the people who attacked and killed him. That's on Newsmax. U.S. hired Al-Qaeda linked group to defend Benghazi mission. So, (coughs) John Bolton, U.S. ambassador, says, Benghazi could bring down an Obama administration. His, and, yeah, so, official, CBS News, we knew Benghazi was a terrorist attack from the get-go. So you've got this guy, he's a 22-year veteran, his name's Gregory Hicks. He was the assistant uh, deputy, uh, the deputy uh, assistant ambassador in Benghazi. So he was the commander of the mission of uh, chief of the mission after Christopher Stevens died. He was in Tripoli when Christ- Ambassador Stevens was being murdered 
in Benghazi, okay? So this is the guy, the second in command on the ground. He says, we knew Benghazi was a terrorist attack from the get-go. Everybody in the mission in Benghazi, Libya, thought the attack on the U.S. consulate there last September 11th was a terror attack from the get-go. According to excerpts from interview investigators conducted from, with the number two official in Libya at the time, obtained by CBS News, Face the Nation. I think everybody in the mission thought it was a terrorist attack from the beginning. Greg Hicks, a 22-year Foreign Service diplomat who was the highest-ranking U.S. official in Libya after the strike, told investigators under the authority of the U House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Hicks, uh, anyway, we got to go to break here. I hope that you understand that this is bigger than Watergate. This is Occupy Freedom, and we'll be right back after this. We're back talking about Benghazi. I uh, I want it to sink into the American people how serious this is. I want you to understand how serious it is when the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says, "What does it matter? What was going on on the ground? What do these lives matter? What difference does it make? What was going on?" I want you to. I want you to fathom what it was like for those Navy SEALs to fight like that, to ask for help, and no help came. <clears throat> I want that to sink in for you, what that must have been like. Uh, I don't have time to talk about everything else, so this is going to be a two-parter. The next part, I'm going to talk about the cover-up. But I'm, uh, it's hard for me to imagine that you would abandon our soldiers who've dedicated their lives to this nation. The most dedicated soldiers we have are the Navy SEALs, among the most. And we let them die. And it does matter. And it does make a difference. And we need to do something about this president and his administration. I'm David Lloyd Vanderbeek, and this is Occupy Freedom. We'll see you next time soon. <laughs>